Well, hi again, folks. I'm Greg Flynn, the Public Information Director here in the City of Pearl, and we have got a special mayoral update for you, and we'd like to welcome in our mayor, Jake Windham, who has been chomping at the bit with excitement because he has got some projects that you all are going to be extremely impressed with. Yeah, Greg. So I wanted to make sure before I came in the studio that we can kind of give a running list of what everything's happening in, in the city. Obviously, uh, one of the major buzzwords these days is infrastructure, infrastructure, infrastructure. You know, so um, our thought process is for future planning, just to let our people know, um, number one, uh, when we start about infrastructure, not only goes with sewer lines, water lines, it goes with a bridge project, it goes with paving roads, additional drainage projects. So I'll just start off with some of the things that we have uh, already this uh, under construction we have the bridge con uh, contract that we have on South Pearson that's really been uh, going well uh, that's a 17 million dollar project so the city is a 20 percent uh, contribution to that project other is 80 percent of federal funds and we've leading on the state legislature quite a bit in order to help us be able to finance that and uh, Senator Dean Kirby and Gene Newman and Josh Harkins Senator Harkins and um, the Rankin County delegation has been really helpful on trying to help us get those funds. So we're looking at that uh, particular project being completed in 2024, uh, Lord willing, the first quarter of uh, 2024. And, uh, you know, you always have uh, rain that gets in the way, as we've seen on our uh, park project, and uh, which should be buttoned up very soon. So, but having a $17.2 million project is going to help a lot of egress and ingress to get in and out of Pearl. Also going to provide some business development there down on that corridor where we rezoned that area uh, C3 uh, so that it would attract business to come in. And I think that uh, phase two of that project is actually going over the bridge and then uh, there will be a road constructed to tie into Highway 49 through a thousand mm -hmm. acres, and that, that land will be mitigated, which uh, what uh, Mayor Pat Sullivan of Richland and myself are really trying to work hard with the Mississippi Development Authority to bring possibly manufacturing companies in that area and certify that, that area as a, a mega rail site or um, a mega site, which includes uh, rail at that location. So when you have a large area like that, when, it, when, when you do, um, bring in manufacturing companies, then you have subsidiary companies that provide supply chain to them. Uh, now, some of that's pie in the sky at this point, but we do have the bridge project in place, which is initially a safety project, but the secondary project would be an economic development project, and we're working with our engineers, which is Pickering, uh, Rick Ferguson, and also working with the MDOT to determine a termini to come out to Highway 49 that's going to benefit that economic development project on the second phase. Well, what's fascinating about that project in particular is, you know, we all knew it was exciting for us here in Rankin County, for Pearl, for Richland, well, for everybody, but are you surprised with the national and international exposure that that bridge and that corridor has gotten? Yeah, so if you look on our, our uh, Facebook page, you would see uh, different languages posting on there. And I'm not an engineer, uh, but talking to our engineer that designed uh, the whole project, Rick Ferguson, it's, it's, one of the, it's one of the first projects like that done in Mississippi. And obviously, it's an impressive project where many engineers around the world wanted to see it uh, actually get set in place by 875-ton crane. Mm. Uh, so it was very impressive. And, you know, something that a project that had been asleep for a long time, we've I always like to call that project the Phoenix that we rose from the ashes, <laughs> and uh, but it's it's been a well-needed project and it's going to help people and it's going to help Pearl um, not only for our safety, like I said, and but it's going to grow us from a uh, economic development standpoint. All right. So and moving down the list. Yeah. So we got we have phase one of a uh, sewer project on um, Airport Road. There's going to be two phases to that going down South Airport Road. It's gonna help serve the historically African-American communities over off uh, Sweet Home Church and off Old Whitfield Road. But it's also gonna serve people on Airport Road to, um, to just right there at State Hospital. It's gonna be beyond our city limits, but we're gonna have to tie into a, a lift station there for West Rankin Utility Authority. That way we can actually feed the sewer 
uh, from the north part of airport all the way to that location so we can get it to the uh, sewer treatment plan again the thought process is serving your citizens there and secondly uh, you have the opportunity to bring an economic development project or business development because if you have sewer we already have water there if you bring sewer there then the potential of more business coming there is um, I guess the lack of better terms is you're setting the fields fertile uh, for for additional businesses to come in. So yeah, we're excited that's about a, that. That's like a big empty canvas. A lot of right. those, that tracts of land there are just waiting uh, to be developed. So you see that, and then uh, there's a lot of tracts of land, a lot of parcels uh, that people want. So putting putting placing sewer through that particular area is going to be really good for the city. Now the first part of that project, some of that was WCI. WCI funds with uh, MCWI funds, which is ARPA funds, uh, from the federal government. Total cost of that project's uh, three three point five million dollars. The second part of that project, which will actually go um, from it's about a, it's about approximately midway down Airport Road, they actually tie into the to the lift station there at West Rankin is four point five million dollars. Uh, again, half of this, all of this project is being pay for it through federal grants through the federal government we chose to take our ARPA funds and put it towards sewer projects uh, not only sewer projects where we're we're putting new sewer in the ground in order to help business develop in the city but secondly we're also doing a another sewer project that's on the southwest side of the city it's called the Grandview Interceptor now this thing actually has a lot of the sewer through our city going through it on the southwest side and then it goes to the plant well over the years there's been deterioration to this interceptor and there's been a lot of water infiltration into it so um, along with these mcwi funds some people call them arpa or mcwi we're going to do a, a total renovation of that which is going to less let less i and i which is infiltration of water into our sewer lines and um, we're looking at a soft uh, a cost saving down the road um, for our bill there at West Rankin Utility Authority. Uh, a lot of these things are, are some things that we've been wanting to do a long time. Uh, we're gonna try to take advantage and use our funds from uh, the federal government in such a way where you, know, you would never receive it before. I'm not, I'm not saying that I typically agree with all the funding that went out. However, since we do have these funds, we wanna make good on it and do these infrastructure projects that would take the city many more years to uh, try to build out or renovate some of these items that n need attention um, right now. Um, so there's a list of projects here and I don't wanna bore all of our citizens talking about it, but I think everybody needs to know what we do every day. We don't, you know, it's, uh, if you come by 2420 Old Brandon Road, there's a lot of work going on and there's a lot of things that we're trying to push out. Well, I think one of the things that's very important is, you know, you're weighing the, the, the balance of things that people can see versus the things people can't see, like the underground work, the infrastructure is gonna set the city forward for the next 50 years, we just turned 50, and then you wanna do some of that curb appeal stuff that you're doing that people can see, so it's it's going in both directions. Right, exactly. What you're saying is we, we, we can see paving projects, we can see business development, things coming out of the ground, or we can see improvements uh, through some revital revitalization projects, but. You're exactly right. So the water and the sewer that goes underground is just in, just as important for the city's life for the future as anything else. Just ask our neighbors. Oh yeah, that's <laughs> very true. So I mean, they they understand it. They're going through a hard time. So what we're trying to do is, hey, we never get in that situation. We're trying to be proactive mm -hmm. uh, currently, which leads us into outside of. And I'll finish up on sewer. What we're also going to do with sewer, we're we are um, on taking is called a uh, it's a revolving loan fund through. DEQ, it's like 0.08% where we can draw down funds and do major projects. And what we'll do is start in our older subdivisions and go in and rehab sewer pipes, again, addressing the infiltration of stormwater. Um, that's very important. Not only, you don't, you don't want a city in a situation where you have uh, things collapsing or things or your infrastructure not in place. And, and the way I look at it, and I've said this before on the program was, Hey, the only way that you eat an elephant is one bite at a time. So my my wishes are, and I hope this, if somebody's going to be mayor beyond the time that I'm out of office, <laughs> just
just to continue to do it. Yeah. You have to continue to do water projects. You have to continue to, you're never done with them. You have to always do that. Paving projects, you always have to do those things because what happens is if you don't spend money on that, the deferred maintenance gets so great that you can't allocate the cost. You don't have the funding for it. So a little bit goes a long way. Folks out there um, on the, um, at their homes and looking at our Facebook page, what do they have to do at their house? Well, we got to paint this year. Uh, we got to, you know, we're going to renovate our bathroom next year. I mean, just different things. You have to do things in step and you have to be um, decent and orderly about uh, putting those things in place. So I think if we could, I guess, harness that energy and move forward and do what we need to do, uh, the, uh, we, we are doing the correct things to make, the, make sure the city is successful. And that's important to me. Uh, when, when, I don't, when I'm no longer in this position, I want to make sure that we're doing all, we've done all the things to set the city in the right manner to move forward. And uh, moving on to our, our water projects. Um, fortunately, when we did this, it's, again, there's some, there's some um, funding out there that we've done research on and we've seen other cities do, be very successful about. And there's a, there's a drinking water loan out there with the Department of Health. And it was, again, 1.8%. And so that's going to allow us to go in and uh, repair reoccurring water leaks throughout the city. We've identified those lines and when we submitted it, there was some forgiveness there and we, and we received about $1.8 million in grants to replace those reoccurring water leaks. Then you talk about a storage tank that we're going to put in place and another well. And then we're going to do, after we get those things in place, in the process of it, we just continue to uh, rehab old water lines that need to be addressed just like we do the do the sewer lines now the bad part about this is what I'll probably see on social media is hey my yards torn up things yeah. like that but understand that it's for a greater cause it's for our future and if you don't plan for the future uh, then you're not doing your citizens any type of justice when you see it now I mean you have the work crews that have to constantly go back into the same areas and repair and put a patch and put a patch this is going to allow us to have new pipe right and so you won't have to have the recurring so yes if if residents have to have their yard dug up uh one time and then it lasts for several years before somebody has to come back it's a lot better than now where you know that you have those trouble spots that they're, they're constantly digging up somebody's yard over and over and over well and it's frustrating for the citizens that may live on that road i can tell you uh i can tell you my for myself, you know, I go to church at Pearl Presbyterian Church and the people on Showtard will have a water leak over there. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a four inch line. It's a four inch asbestos pipe that needs to be replaced. And we have some of those uh, throughout the city. So we've identified a lot of those things. Something that's really, really impressive for us and what we're trying to do uh, for the city to say, hey, um, we're planning for the future is we're making sure that we GPS the water valves and the sewer valves within the city. That way, when we move forward, you can look on a digital map and you can see everything through the city. And that can go on, that's, that's digital infrastructure that you put in place. That way, anybody that comes after us, guess what? I know where to pinpoint it. Which number one, when you're in the process of trying to get water back on for your citizens, that's, that's crucial. So I can go out there and find this water valve, cut it off, get to it. Um, something that uh, we've also looked at a new product and technology is really great. There's, there's something out there now called an eye hydrant that has the cloud guts in the hydrant area. So let's say that, let's give an example. If you're off King Drive and we have an eye hydrant there, we will have readings in our office that will indicate and we'll get receive alert that the pressure is low over there. So not only if pressure is low, we start having guys start mobilized there, we can figure out that number one, might not have a main blow if we can understand where it is and we can shut the area off uh, quicker to know and go back to those valves. And it's just makes things much more efficient. We know we're not, we're not working a whole neighborhood to try to find out where the pressure problems are mm -hmm. because you'll have one hydrant to set up in one location and another one so you can see what's in between. And look, I think that's gonna do um, huge things for- Well, they won't have to shut off an entire area. They can really isolate where the issue is, that's right? That's it. And that's, that's really the number one is for us to be able to understand 
what we see, the readings from our computers. We can actually read this stuff and our wells, everything that we have from a phone app at this point. We'll be able to do all those things, um, which on the flip side of it, I mean, this is somewhere I look at it. Our guys get overtime working, but at the same time, you don't require much as much hands-on when you can read it from, from a mm -hmm. phone as well. So I think with all those things tied in and you being able to isolate an area, you're gonna be able to provide more production for your citizen in a short period of time. And that's what we're trying to do. We understand that they pay for everything anyway. So that's what we're trying to do, just provide a better service. Well, and God bless the mapping of the valves because no offense to any prior administrations, but since Pearl was created and even before then, I've talked to a lot of the public works guys. It is amazing that they go out there and it's like things are twisted. It's like mousetrap out there that these lines were laid and then these lines and then overlaid. And they, a lot of times they can't figure out where to shut the water off because they're looking for it, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So those guys do a great job. All of our departments, they go above and beyond. For sure. Uh, if people, uh, people have their own lives to live, children to take care of, but if people was just, um, just for a day to kind of see what goes on, they would be amazed. They and, would. They, and they would be really impressed. I really think that our citizens would be really impressed. <clears throat> but I'll, I'll move on to the, to the road projects. We no. can see those. Uh, we can see those. This is just some additional funding. We work really hard to try to get federal grants. And uh, we try to make sure that when we present our application package for these federal grants that we do in a timely manner, um, we work with CMPDD on this. Kathy Bourgeois is our special projects officer. She does a tremendous job along with, again, um, uh, some of the different engineers that we work with. But we have an MPO projects, which are functional classification roads. And that's a, that's a fancy word for main thoroughfares within the city. <laughs> so we have uh, Cross Park, uh, Old Brandon, portions of Old Brandon. Old Brandon from right here at City Hall, the Larry's Auto Sales will be repaved. Uh, I believe we have on board. Also, we're gonna repave Old Brandon to Pemberton. That's not part of the federal grant, but if you have new pavement from here on Old Brandon to Larry's Auto, why would you not wanna yeah, pay the rest of it? You gotta finish it, 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 it out. Nice. You want some <laughs> conti continuity, you want it to make it look right, and I'm a stickler for trying to make sure things are um, looking right and trying to get something aesthetically pleasing. So, but outside of that, we also have Old Brandon from King Drive all the way to Pearlwood Apartments. That's gonna be paved. Cross Park Drive, which is behind, the road behind DBAT, uh, North Fox Hall. Also, we're gonna have Weem Street, which is on the southwest part of the city, an industrial area. So, it, it's, it's uh, that project cost is $1.8 million, and we, uh, we have set aside enough money, 20% of that, to be able to do it. You know, a lot of these things, you can't do it without being good stewards with the funds that we receive, the tax dollars, whether it be Avalorum or sales tax. I mean, the, the mother's milk of any organization is money. Oh, yeah. So we, we have to be able to put aside these things in capital projects in order to get these things off the ground. And just moving right into the same type thing, it's an 80-20 um, uh, grant, it's traffic signal upgrades. And if y'all notice, we've been able to uh, replace all of our traffic signals within the city except for two. Uh, and that's the black mast arms, again, aesthetically pleasing, look nice, and, and from a safety standpoint, they work a lot better than wire span and they save lives. Um, they stand up a whole lot better in the wind and the storms, right? Yeah, they do. <laughs> they do, but the, uh, the light at Phillips and Pearson Road, right. right there at Frisco Deli in Texaco, it's gonna be replaced with black mast arms. And also the light at 49 and 80, which is a wire span, yep. Uh, signal as well, that's going to be replaced. There will be some delay in that because of the ordering of the material, but we actually have, um, we, we've just uh, bid that out and Powell Construction was awarded the bid. So that'll be moving forward. And you know, another thing, that's a safety project. So, oh, yeah. I mean, if you can continue to provide some additional safety for uh, your citizens, that's what you need. And then uh, for me, I'm a little OCD, so now it means all the black mast arms were in the city. We have, <laughs> we have one left uh, that we'll have, one more left they will have to do, and that's um, West Rankin uh, Parkway. And so we, since we're talking about paving right now, I'll just touch on this. Uh, you know, I've been in close contact with the executive director of MDOT, Brad White, 
and he and I've had a lot of conversations. So, uh, uh, you know, the public, there's a lot of things that go on what people say. Uh, we're having a meeting with MDOT Wednesday at 3 p.m. here at City Hall, and it's going to be with the executive director. I've asked the aldermen to attend if their schedule allowed, and, and most all of the aldermen are going to be there uh, just for us to get in the room. You know, sometimes it's better for them to hear the information coming out of the executive director's mouth. So, but here's what I'm going to tell everybody. The project's not going away. Um, the Hemp Hill was awarded the project in 2019 and uh, MDOT inspectors got out there and found additional bad dirt. So that caused them to um, uh, caution with moving along with the project. So there's a, there's a stop work at this point. There's uh, Hemp Hill's finishing up and then they have went out, uh, when I say they, MDOT has asked Burns Cooley Dennis, which is, which is a geotechnical engineering firm to go out, look at the dirt some more. And they've also, uh, the MDOT commission recently hired um, Neil Schaefer to go out and redesign. So with all that being said is, it's not on my timeline and there's variables that come in, but that we don't pay for that road either. So MDOT is the sole person or entity, I mean, that, that's going to be paying for the road. But uh, I want to make sure that our citizens understand that it's moving forward. It, it, it's not dead. Uh, there's going to be a lot of benefits to that road connecting to Flowood. I've, I've uh, worked with Mayor Gary Rose over there in Flowood, so there's going to be a lot of things that come out of that. It's just, as I've said before, you think that projects are going along just great, and then you hit the wall, and then now it's just the perseverance to keep pushing and not give it up and make sure that the persistence is there from, a, uh, from my position as being mayor. I mean, that's what your job is to do, is just keep things rolling. You know, try to make sure that we don't, we don't get stagnant on projects. I mean, as I said before, the park project has been, um, has been a contentious thing through our city, but you know, you have contracts that you get to deal with, and then, hey, we're getting to a much more closer stage at this point. And, um, but I do wanna, I would like to say to our citizens, you know, part of that construction project on the park itself, if you drive a little further up Center City Drive, you can see the baseball fields were done. It was the previous general contractor. You go up to Center City, it's part of this phase two with the parks being done. The Octagon building's been renovated. You had a soccer concession stand that um, should be completed very soon. If not, I won't be able to go to soccer games for my <laughs> child. Uh, but Bright Park has a bathroom, and then Jenkins Park is getting a new attendance office. It's well overdue. You know, things that people have asked for for years at Bright Park mm. is being done. New attendance office that needs to be done over at Jenkins Park is being done. And so there's other things, a part of that scope of work that has to be considered from, uh, from the citizens. But anyway, I appreciate the continued patience. And if anybody would like to contact my office and talk about that in, in depth, I'd be more than, more than happy to, to do that. Well, and um, those will open. I mean, it's not a question of, of uh, if, but just when, right? Because what did they say the last time? Almost all of those projects are at 90 plus percent completed. Yeah. So they're really close, but it's just getting over the hump to finish it out, right? Yeah, that's that's all it is. It's just getting the hump. And then when you have a continued, the, the amount of rain that we receive in Mississippi is uh, a whole lot of times to deal with. So, um, but yeah, they're right there on the fringe of, um, of being completed. And I know we don't dare give a date, right? Because you just, you gotta, you just, <laughs> it's one of those things where we're working as fast as we possibly can, right? No, yeah, you, you work as possible, you, as fast as you can, and uh, you gotta work within the scope of a contract. Um, that's really it. I mean, you have a contract that says, one of the things that I had to consider, we awarded that project originally in August of 2020, during the midst of COVID, right? right. And so in the contract, it says pandemic, um, which covers you pretty heavily in the contract. Oh yeah. So this is what, this is my, my thought process. And you know, people, everybody has different opinions, but this is the way I approached it. And so we have this contract that states this. Let's say we cancel the contract. Let's get sued, number one, we'll be in litigation. There will be no progress on the park. 
and then after we rebid it, it'll be 30 or 40 percent higher than what it was originally. So just because of inflation and everything else, I mean, it's so my thing is, you know, as much as it is from a frustrating standpoint, there's some new ownership in this construction company that's really turned things on the last six months. And um, so what I have to make sure that I tell myself not to think emotionally, right? I got to think from a um, from, from a CEO uh, standpoint. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I got to think about concrete facts, what's being presented to me, make executive decisions based on the information given to me. And I think that's that's how you have to do things and get things done correctly. So, you know, <laughs> we rode by there one day. This will crack you up. We rode by the park and Maggie Kate's sitting in the back seat and she's like, Man, I wish this mayor could get this park built. <laughs> <laughs> she just smiled. I was like, thank you. I appreciate it. She, she was just smiling from ear to ear because she, she has to, she hears it too, you know, me talking about it. So it's. Well, that's one of the things I do want to point out is that, you know, you hear all the rumblings, you hear people making fun of it. And, you know, you're a Pearl guy. You're born and raised here. You, you are Pearl through and through. This is just as frustrating to you, probably more so than to anybody else in the city. Yeah, yeah, there is no doubt about that. No, about, no doubt about it. Um, so, uh, you know, it's been, it's been long, um, it's been a journey. And uh, anyway, we're on the other side of it at this point. That beard never used to be that white, I noticed. Uh, you can go look at pictures in City Hall <laughs> right now. <laughs> and. Uh, I've been accused of being my kid's grandfather twice in the last six months. <laughs> and it'll do it to you. Yeah, so. It'll do it to you. How old are your grandchildren? <laughs> Those are my kids, by the way. They're not my grandchildren. <laughs> so, but it's, uh, it's been a ride and it's been, it's been fun, you know, but um, it's really fun watching all these projects culminate, all these sewer yeah. projects, all these paving projects, water projects, you know, um, something outside of just the 80-20 um paving projects that i didn't mention a while ago is we're going to be paving some more within our districts within the city uh, so some of those roads that i talked about before the federal funded they they benefit every citizen within the pearl within the city of pearl but we're going to be uh, concentrating on doing some more paving within the districts within the city we're gathering that information now our public works director is excuse me uh putting the budget together again to make sure that we are doing things within our means uh, and then trying to satisfy citizens at the same time and setting expectations. Um, you know, I think if you could do some of the simple things really well, then it benefits the economic development. It benefits uh, having over a thousand houses built in your city right now. And that's something else that we're, you know, we have a lot of construction going on, versatile homes throughout the city on the south part of the city and the north part of the city. So there's a lot of things that are that are happening that I'm very proud about. and. Uh, again, so the other day I looked at it and it's not all the time that I talk about this, but our, our sales tax revenue, and you've heard me say this, but it's a clear sign of commerce within your city. And so we rank number three in the metro area in uh, sales tax revenue. Uh, Jackson's first, Ridgeland second, Pearl's third. And so that has not always been that way. And um, with the help from the good Lord and uh, guiding our decisions around here and the patience of our citizens, then, you know, things are, things are going really good. So the, I think probably from our standpoint, they, this, this infrastructure program is just a campaign of excellence. And what I want to do is in the upcoming months, this is going to start soon. And then over the years, just show people what, what's going on, whether we provide camera footage or drone footage or things of that nature to let people know that that we're in tune to what needs to be done, that we're not going to fail them when other municipalities haven't done the things needed to move the city forward. Uh, that's very important to me. Well, I mean, it's a great kind of a state of the city uh, update that you're giving as we turn 50. You know, financially, we're doing fantastic too. Your conservative leadership and keeping money back in reserves and in the bank account. You know, you just had the recent audit uh, from last year and we got shining shining grades on that too. We did, we did. It's, it's an unmodified um, audit, which is the highest rating that you can receive. Our net position changed $9.5 million. Um, 
you know, we had a negative balance, fund balance at one time on our audit. Now we have a positive $14.1 million. And um, that, that's a, there's a lot of municipal accounting in there, but to, to, to be able to come from where we were to what we are now just means that we're gonna be able to provide more for our citizens in the future. So it's taken time uh, to do so. It's, but let's, let's touch on that. What was the fund balance when you took over? Uh, it was negative 924,000. Negative 924,000. Now, as you just mentioned, it's worth saying that number again. What is our fund balance? 14.1 million currently. That is crazy. It is crazy. So I don't, you know, that's a team working together. People understanding things, putting internal accounting uh, procedures together. And, you know, I'm also, I think it's important, the most important to give God the glory. We're trying to use some some principles that to honor him and i think he's honored us i really i really believe that uh, because there's some things that have fell into place over the course of the last six seven years that you know uh, we couldn't have done it without without within amongst ourselves let's put it like that good things have happened good things have really happened um i'm really excited was one one thing that i want to touch about maybe some of the some of the things that are not as major as our infrastructure projects and paving projects and, and signal projects that uh, we still continue to try to work on the revitalization of Highway 80. Uh, we have some projects that are coming up on some shopping centers that we're working with the owners there uh, to try to provide some aesthetic improvements, which I think will provide some, um, I think for our citizens, it will be contagious for other uh, businesses within the city. I think people have seen Trustmark, Trustmark Bank there on 80 looks completely different. In the last six years, we've had 30 buildings painted on Highway 80. And, um, and it's not because of Big Brother coming in there saying everybody needs to do this. It's, it's building civic pride. It's looking your best and uh, putting your best foot forward. Um, I grew up in the 90s. So I was exposed to Deion Sanders, you know, look good, feel good, play good. <laughs> That's right. And so you just, I mean, for me, it's, it's just saying, hey, you know what? We're stepping up our game here. We want to look better. We want to present ourselves better. We want to be a progressive city competing. Uh, when, when you move into the number nine slot in the state for sales tax revenue, we're the largest city in Rankin County. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm trying to act like it, you know? Yeah. Well, and you get that pride. I mean, there really is something about it when you drive down our main corridor, uh, when people come into the city and make that right off of Pearson Road and you're going to come down Highway 80, you'll want it to look classy, right? Yeah. And, you know, I'm not trying to be somebody else. Right. I'm trying to be the best pearl that we can be. Yeah. And I think that's important. And we work with people all the time. So we continue to do that, um, you know, and... I think uh, some of the other things that people don't know, they probably go to other cities and they wonder why we don't have welcome to Pearl signs. Well, Pearl is uniquely built on a, on an interstate corridor. So uh, according to Federal Highway, you have certain criteria that you have to meet in order to put a sign at certain places. So we submitted four signs to MDOT and they checked with Federal Highway and they've approved two. So we're working with the Chamber of Commerce to put one in place uh, pretty soon come up with a design and then and then have it constructed uh, so those are some of the ancillary things that you don't think about no it's crazy day. if the, the public at home w you have to get permission to put up a welcome to pearl sign it, it's, that's you got to get permission to <laughs> plant a bush on highway 80 in the center turn lane you know what i'm saying where the where the any i mean it's just part of it yeah. because you have you have these regulations that we have to go through and there's some red tape um but we try to do the right thing and, and, and be instead with MDOT. Uh, they, there's a lot of good guys over there. And again, the executive director over there, Brad White, he, he's helped Pearl quite a bit uh, during his tenure. He hadn't been there but a couple years, but he's really made an impact on that organization. So it's helped the city in a great way. Well, and I know pretty soon we'll have some, some more news about Midtown Pearl. Uh, there's some things that are going on right now behind the scenes that We'll be able to share with the public um, in the near future uh, about growing us into a midtown, not necessarily a downtown, but a midtown uh, here within from Pearson Road to Beardeman, from Highway 80 to Old Brandon Road. Yeah, and, and here's our concept is we control property here on the complex. 
uh, when Main Street came in, we had the scope of work of what uh, could occur on this complex. And this past board meeting, we surplus the items or the structures that are on uh, Shepherd Field. Uh, right outside this building here, the old Pearl Police Department parking lot, that's going to be a commercial parcel too. Uh, we've raised the standards through working through Orion Group, so if these, if these two pieces of property are sold in the future, then there's going to be an architectural standard that's, that's high. Uh, now, one thing about some cities that are pre-World uh, War II, they have different architecture than we do, so they have the downtown area. What we got to start with is, is this synergy just for what the land that we can control itself and then work with realtors, work with developers to try to expand it. I can't go to somebody that lives on Pearl Drive or Parkway and make them sell their house. Right. Even, even uh, when we've approached them in the past um, about doing that, I can't make them sell. But what I can do is um, have this complex where we have possibly new construction, which again, activity breeds activity. So, and then from there, expand. Um, if somebody comes in, and I want to say this, so here's the thing when you talk about government and talking about state statute. Say we go to the house on Parkway, the citizen at home says, well, won't you just offer them double the price of the house of what the retail value is or what the appraisal value is? And by law, I can't do it. Right. Can't do that with tax dollars. So, uh, so there's some avenues that's harder for us to work. What I want to do is make sure that what we're doing at City Hall that developers around us believe in, and then they can expand upon that. They can go give that house that money if they if, if the person wanted to sell it. Well, you mentioned the word before, and I think it's perfect. It becomes contagious. Yeah. So you want to make it nice, and then it becomes contagious that everybody else wants to build up the area around to be part of this complex. Right. And it doesn't happen overnight. I want to set some expectations right now. I don't expect this thing to happen today. I mean, it's not happening like that. It doesn't occur like that. Um, you know, Stacy Smith, our Main Street Events Coordinator, she's went to several of these conferences, uh, some out of state, some in state, and sometimes it takes uh, several years to get this thing going. And some of our, some of the uh, things that have slowed down on this was we still had Park Place that utilized the field, so we couldn't move on things as much as we wanted to. We wanted to go ahead and put the plan in place and move forward in a way where we're making the, the correct decisions. Um, now, people were asking, you know, we've had phone calls about, hey, where, where's everybody going to play Pee Wee football? They're going to play on Allen Guyton Field. We have a multi-purpose field there that, uh, that football is going to be played on. And then now we'll have every sport on Center City Drive centralized to a complex, mm -hmm. uh, which I think that's a good thing. Now, at the end of the day, you have uh, what's, what's the highest use of an empty football field? Now. A 1968 graduate from Pearl. I got an Uncle Tom Wyndham graduated here. He was you know, messing with our football field. I was like, well, I'm just saying, you know, for us to grow, you got to change your plan. And so we're changing the plan and we're trying to be progressive in a way where uh, trying to be, when I say progressive, creative. I mean, that's really the, the, the tone that we're trying to set, being creative. And if, um, if we could do infrastructure right, if we can be our, if we can make sure there are funds or where they need to be, and then be creative, then we can move into a place where we're sought after even more than what we are, from uh, our public safety to our services to, you know, really and truly, I get a lot of compliments on the city of Pearl just because of our citizens just being down home, good folks that are easy to talk to, and they they don't put on any. Uh, they don't, they don't put on any frills. They're just real easy to get along with. A lot of people that have moved here from other areas. So with all those combinations coming together, I think that we make a big impact and we continue to make a big impact. I mean, you think about it, Chipotle's coming in on the east side of town. We have a couple of restaurants, which I'm, it's under contract. I'm not saying I'm, <laughs> no, no. Was, Yeah, the, the park has made me gun shy a little bit. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's made me gun shy so a little bit. Pull the reins yeah, back, so, and there goes the But rain. yeah, so we have some some restaurant additional restaurants looking over here um, uh, on the west side of the city. Then we have Team Ten that's going in on Old Brandon Road right there before you get to uh, uh, El Dorado on the right. So we have some we have some things occurring uh, throughout the city 
that's really good. So we're thinking more food places, infrastructure improvements, starting a midtown area. Um, and if you start itemizing all the projects that we really have, if I just started telling you everything and not put everybody to sleep, it'd be over 30 projects, yeah. easily. Easily. Well, I was asked by the media recently uh, to kind of define Pearl. What makes Pearl so great is we talked about our 50th birthday. I said, number one, it's diverse. We are welcoming of everybody and you can take a look at our demographics. We are as diverse as, as a big, big city. And two, we have all the amenities of a big city, but we also have that small town atmosphere. You right. know, whether you make a lot of money or you don't make very much money, there's still a place for you here in Pearl and you're, you're loved. That's exactly right. Uh, that's, a, that's a great way to put it. And um, it's been really special uh, celebrating this 50th anniversary. Uh, if you would have told me when I was 15 years old, when I said that I was gonna run for mayor of Pearl, that I would have been here when the city turned 50, <laughs> You know, I would have told you you're probably a liar. <laughs> but uh, through the process of, you know, working with, you know, former mayors, seeing uh, former elected officials in the city or people that were significant in the city at the time, let's say like Ron Morgan has a wealth of knowledge. And then um, our city historian, Chris Reed, you've worked with him. It's just been something that's really good to make people understand, hey, you got to know where you start from to understand where you're going. So you think people need to put this in perspective. Pearl was, or became a city in 73, and then look up the accomplishments that it's in made. In just 50 years. In, in just 50 <laughs> years, if you compare, you know, if you have other cities across the state that are more successful or less successful, and we've only been a city for 50 years. Uh -huh. I mean, we've made great strides, and we've had a lot of people come before us, and we have a lot of people's shoulders that we're standing on right now, today. Um, but I want to thank the citizens for um, everything that they do day in and day out. I realize that uh, sometimes, um, sometimes you can, I, myself, I can get caught in, in just working and I want to make sure that I come in here and tell everybody what's going on. And, and look, if you have a question of me or something that you want to talk to me about, we have a, um, on our website, you can send me a, send me a message or I'll just tell you my 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 email address is jwindham at cityofpearl.com and you can reach me there if you want to talk to me about some things and meet with me that uh, you think the city needs um, needs some guidance on I mean we'll be more than happy to sit down with you. Well the present is exciting the future looks even greater. Mayor thank you for that state of the city here as we turn 50. You're welcome, Greg. Thanks for having me, man. All uh, right, you guys can track us anytime. Follow the news on our social media. We're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, we're on Twitter, we're now on threads. So you can find out information. It's not a secret what we're doing here. Until next time, I'm Greg Flynn. You folks have a great day.